My next guest here is a longtime friend. He is an amazing, prolific musician from the state of Minnesota. Plays all sorts of guitars, bass, keyboards, drums, and sings great. I'm always guaranteed. I don't know if he's done it every year, but just about every year that I've known him has sent me CDs. He's recording all the time, and he has a great new album out. It's called Wisdom. We'll let you know where you can buy it or download the tracks. Without further delay, I welcome to Musicians Reveal, Ray Gilman. How you doing, Ray? I'm doing great. How you doing, Joe? Yeah, it looks like. Uh, do you record? It looks like you, I see some kind of mixer in in the background there. Yeah, I'm I'm in my home studio. Pretty much okay. what I do in my spare time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, oh, go ahead. I almost do one album a year, but if I guess if I'm playing live a lot, I don't get as much chance. But yeah, lately but, with uh, the COVID and everything. <laughs> You do a lot more than a lot of musicians as far as putting out great songs, you know, on a consistent basis. So you're, you're to be commended on that. Thank you. Now, Wisdom um, was released in the beginning of the year. And how did uh, the songs take fruit? I mean, basically, how do you, how do you build a track? Or is it different well, every time? I, can't, I get, get it in my head. And, you know, usually sometimes I start on keyboards or guitar okay. and write it. And then I... I lay out the drums and then uh, a guitar, rhythm guitar or a keyboard, add bass. But there are some songs where I've wrote on the bass, but it okay. usually starts with the drums and I build it up from there and then do the vocals. And I put the lead guitar on last now, just work so I know where to put it, you know, mm -hmm. in between the spaces and that's, so that's kind of how I do it one instrument at a time. What would you consider your, your, top echelon instrument oh guitar definitely guitar oh yeah lead guitar yeah now you play you play a lot of uh different guitars i, I noticed different acoustic guitars on this record and electric and uh i had a question because i i've only had a guest perform when we were at wvof in the studio uh an acoustic 12 string guitar um is that more difficult to play and what what does it add to your sound a 12 string acoustic uh, it has a a unique sound, I think. Uh, I've had one since I bought one out of the Wards catalog when I was in high school. So I've always played 12 string. <laughs> right. And uh, a lot of times I bring it to my live solo shows. I'll do a mixture of acoustic and electric. But the 12 string has been a staple with me for years and years. And I've had a, I had an old Ovation 12 string for many years, but it fell off the stand and broke the headstock off. Oh, was okay. catastrophic, so I, I got a newer <laughs> ovation a right, while right. back. Are there twelve string uh, electric guitars? Are they? they yes, I, I've had one before, but okay. I didn't have really have much of a use for it. But yes, there are twelve string electrics. Like Jimmy Page has the double it's, neck, you know, and he right. plays it live. But yeah, I prefer the acoustic twelve string. Right now, wisdom. Let's get the count on official count on the Ray Gilman uh, release discography. What number is it in the collection? Uh, 19 or 20. <laughs> I'm oh. starting to lose track. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got a goal to shoot for 25, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah. 21. <laughs> 21. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All that, that matters. <laughs> yeah. Now, wisdom, a lot of thought, I'm sure, goes into the, the lyrics and the feel to a record. Wis wisdom. How did you approach some of the songs as far as lyrical content? Well, you know, as you get older, you learn from your mistakes or you're supposed to anyway. Yeah, and uh, right. I learned a lot of lessons the hard way, you know, in life and with music over the years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just uh, just the state of affairs with the world and everything, you know, you you, you have to reflect on that sometimes, right. you know, and, and uh you know that usually that starts out. I'll write a couple of songs that doesn't really have a theme, but as it builds, and I'll see a theme developing with the songs. So you know, wisdom became the theme because of the mm -hmm. title song, the first track. Right. Anyway, and you've got a powerhouse voice on on your songs. Um, do you lay how many vocal tracks do you lay on different songs? Um, it depends. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes up to six or eight. Anywhere from two to six or eight, 
Right. Like right. Uh, these are the days. There's just a harmony, you know, a lower and a higher harmony in there. That's the only tracks I put on there. Right. But, right. Uh, I have so kind of a weird, weird voice. Uh, people say I, I was. A, oh, go ahead. They say it's a cross between. Ozzy and John Fogarty. So. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna. That was my next question. I said, you, "Did you grow up a Black Sabbath fan?" Yeah, when I was a kid, you know, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah, was right. the music that drove our parents crazy, you know. So <laughs> then I yeah. evolved from there to like right, everything, right. pretty much, you know. Yeah, talking about you, you, you grew up in Minnesota or Wisconsin? Miss Minnesota. Okay. As and far as radio, yeah. Go ahead. Actually, from the east side. Of St. Paul, St. Paul's oh, Rock okay. and East Side, they call it. And, oh, okay. Uh, so, not, I'm in the Southeast Metro, and there's been quite a good music scene down here over the years. You know, we've had a lot of good musicians come out of this area too, as right. well as Minneapolis. Now, now, St. Paul is the Dakota Jazz in St. Paul. That's in Minneapolis. Oh, Minneapolis. Okay, I know the Petersons. I don't know if they had that club or some other club, but yeah, yeah. They they used to have the Artist Quarter and downtown St. Paul, Lower Town, and I lived downtown at the time. Oh, I used okay. to walk over to the Artist Quarter and hear jazz all the time. It was really great. Oh, the Artist Quarter isn't there anymore? No, they closed it, I believe. Oh, okay. Because I've seen that, yeah, in the, in the past, I've seen advertisements for it. So. I believe it's not in the same place anyway that it was. It was like right across the street from where I lived, so it was oh, great. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah, as a musician, just to go over there and, and uh, play. Let's talk about listening to, to music on the radio back when you were growing up in, in Minnesota and what got you into playing the guitar. What, what kind what kind of shows and music were they playing back then? Well, you know, the AM radio or, or rock radio at the time, you would hear a song by Led Zeppelin and then you'd hear Seals and Cross and you'd hear Motown. It wasn't mm -hmm. so genre specific. Right. It was just pretty much called rock and roll. So mm -hmm. I listened to everything. And, and my dad... He listened to rock music and soul and stuff like that. And my, my uncle uh, turned me on to the Beatles when I was a little kid. So when he'd go to school, he'd let me play all his Beatles records over and over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I'd, uh, I'd sit and pretty much memorize all the lyrics and everything to the Beatles. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I got into uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival was probably the first band I really got into. And, uh, you know, and of course, Grand Funk Railroad was my first, oh, yeah. uh, first concert. And, I think Uriah Heep, and then mm -hmm. it was, you know, Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, all of those artists. And then I got into blues, probably mm -hmm. from the English artists, you know, that were giving it back to us, to, to America. And we're, oh, yeah, these blues artists like Muddy Waters, things mm -hmm. like that, you know. So that, that's the, the uh, English musicians actually turned me on to blues. <laughs> who, who were some of your favorite uh, British musicians? Musicians, uh, well, I like Muddy Waters as far as blues right. goes. Mm -hmm. It always puts me in a good mood. Um, right. I like John Mayle a oh, lot. Okay. And he's got an album called Along for the Ride where he's got a different guitarist on every track oh, of the okay. blues wow. genre. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always like Todd Rundgren. I, some of the artists that do everything themselves kind of like what I'm doing, Todd Rundgren and Prince. Uh, you know, there's so many, it's, it's really hard to... Yeah, uh, yeah, I like Peter Gabriel a lot. I just saw yeah, him live. Yeah. Oh, he really? Was, Where, where'd you see him? He was at XL Energy Center in St. Paul. Oh, what okay. Phenomenal show. I mean, he hasn't lost anything. You know, wow. he sounded great. Uh, you know, some of the hard rock bands, uh, I'll throw on some weather reports of jazz every once in a while, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what mood I'm in. Right. Here's some Black Sabbath if I'm cleaning the house. I want to really get... <laughs> Right, all pumped up. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely does. You can uh, get the blood pressure going there and get in a good mood with uh, Black Sabbath, definitely. Pink Floyd, you know, Dave Gilmore. Yeah. I really right, like right. his guitar playing a lot. Now, so, now, Minnesota is such a rich tradition of music, and, and you're carrying along with with your sound, and uh, of course, you know the R and B and funk and rock with with Prince and his camp. Um, what what is uh the feeling with musicians out there? Are there as far as playing live? I know we'll we'll go over some of the gigs that you've got coming up and what you recently played, but uh, how is the live scene out in uh, Twin Cities or around for where you live? It's pretty good. I think uh, there's a lot of specialty like tribute bands and things like mm -hmm. that seems to be popular. 
um, it wasn't, you know, when I broke into playing, I would play like four or five nights a week, but right. it's down, you know, for a couple of nights a week at a club or one night a week. So it's definitely less, probably because everybody's at home staring at their phones <laughs> and everything. That's probably you know? true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's still there. And now in the summer, we'll have a you know a lot of outdoor concerts and festivals and things going on. And uh, so summertime is always real good here. Yeah, and, I just saw I saw an advertisement for I think it's a two day festival. Taste of Minnesota is it called? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's coming up. So, yeah, I've attended that many times, seen a lot of great artists there over right, the years. Right. Yeah, Ray Gilman is with us. And speaking of gigs, I, I believe you had one a couple days ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, where would you play at? That was just uh, right down the road from my house at the Broadway Bar and Grill. Okay. One of my good friend Ray Ellison owns it. And uh, it's in St. Paul Park, Minnesota, which borders Cottage Grove, where I live. Okay. So the towns kind of go St. Paul. Newport, St. Paul Park, Cottage Grove, and then there's Hastings south along the Mississippi River. Okay. So we're, we're kind of the southeast metro down here. Now, now, when you play uh, at the club there, do you play solo or do you play with a trio? I played solo, and okay. uh, I have uh, backing tracks I construct, you know, on my, right. my computer, you know, and stuff, and my setup behind me, right. a mixture of covers and originals, everything from... Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Peter Gabriel, Pink Floyd, uh, you know, all kinds of things like that, you know, that uh, I don't know, I can't even think of all of them now. But then I mix my own songs in with it, oh, you know, okay. and promote my yeah. CD. So I always play oh, my yeah. own songs at my yeah. gigs, too. And you'll be signing and uh, selling CDs right after, at the end yes. of the set, right? Yeah. Yes, I had a, a, a person, Candace, that brought the tip bucket around and was selling my CDs. So oh, <laughs> she okay. did a very cool. nice job the other day. So. Yeah. I mean, you, ha you have to with, you know, the way the music is set up and you're an independent artist. So, yes. you know, you're out gigging, which, which is really good. And, um, yeah, bring and that I, extra I money. I a band yeah. sometimes or do dual gigs. Right. They'll do other projects. Right. You know, like the uh, – Will Hale and the Tadpole Parade that does children's rock rock concerts yeah, for kids. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, on RayGilman.com. We'll, we'll put the yeah, link up there for you. you. I, uh, I have some out, a bunch of outdoor gigs with Will Hale this summer, and uh, it's really nice to get kids interested in music, and it's interactive. Right. Will Will's been doing making his living at it for thirty years, so he's he's really got a talent for that. You know, how how is it difficult with with kids and their energy and. No, it's, it's great. Oh, okay, that's good. It's yeah. a, I, I really enjoy it. You know? Right. Yeah, I, I, I was just saying, because I used to DJ parties, private parties and stuff like that. And I DJed a lot of birthday parties for kids. And I always say two hours felt like uh, 12 <laughs> hours because a lot of the times the parents would just say, okay, we're going to go upstairs. One time they say, we're going to go upstairs and drink wine. If you have to correct them, go right ahead. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, the I last one we... We did was at the Minnesota Children's Museum, and, oh, and that, okay. that was a really well organized uh, gig. They had a lot of security there, and, and yeah. the kids really behaved well. Right, you know, so that was nice. I I just I just picked the wrong parties to DJ. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I leave I leave that gig up to Will, and I right, just worry right. about Ray Gilman gigs. I have uh, over Memorial Day weekend in Hastings, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. It's right on the Mississippi River. Oh, There's an wow. American Legion Club, but they have a, a really nice patio right on the river, overlooking the river. And I've set several gigs up there this summer. And uh, I, I really like it there. It's, it's got a nice vibe. And, you know, they treat me very well and everything. So that I have a, a bunch of those coming up this summer. Yeah, I mean, you got a night. And, I mean, it's beautiful. I've only been there once. I got accepted to go to University of Minnesota. And mm -hmm. I went out there and... <laughs> I think I was just going out there to be in the Minnesota music scene. Sure. It was like 85. And I went out there, me and my brother flew. We, I think we had relatives in, uh, is it Burnsville? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we stayed there and then we went to First Avenue. But the school was on like spring break. So I guess I wasn't <laughs> serious about the school. So, but it was, <laughs> I you remember. Guys had a good nice. time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a really, really nice, nice area there. So. Yeah, we've had a warmer than usual winter, which I'm a giant. It's like 50 degrees today. Yeah, and, uh, we have no snow on the ground, which is yeah. Unusual. Same here. We're upstate New York, like three hours from Canada, and yeah, 
two two but, winners have been great. But that could change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pound it all of a sudden one day. Uh, yeah, my wife's from Montreal, so she she's like, it's only March. She's used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's used to it. Yeah. So let let's talk. We're on, on the theme of children and getting involved with uh, entertaining with them. Your your beautiful granddaughter was on your record and singing and uh, on the title track of the previous record, right? Uh, feel the driving rain. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the first track from uh, right. Think for Yourself. Okay. Yeah, she was. I was in my studio and she came in one day. Papa, can I sing with you? So, all right, I set up a mic and told her what to do, and she did it. You know, yeah, it's pretty cool. How how is uh? She, did she want to get on this last record? No, Isn't... she's been very busy and she's taking fluid at school. She's ten now and okay. she has all of her friends, so she's busy doing mm -hmm. her all of her kid things and she does uh, uh, Mexican traditional Mexican dancing oh, over okay. at, wow. at a church on St. Paul's West Side, which mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have a really nice church where she does it in, and they have all the outfits. So I've got to watch her last recital. It's pretty cool. So she's been really busy with all of that, but you know, right. when she's around, she'll, she's got a uh, keyboard, guitar, flute. Wow. Uh, she's got, she has all the instruments. It's pretty and only 10 years me. old. Wow. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, as far as the rest of the family, do you have musicians that throughout your family and siblings? Yeah. My son, Brian played with my band Gilman's Crossing for a solid 10 years. Oh, and okay. uh, we did some albums, you know, and we did Gilman's Crossing was uh, 18 years and over a thousand gigs. And then oh, Brian left. Yeah. He's a he's a hockey dad now. So he's oh, okay. got a boy. My grandkids are into hockey. So he's right. taking them all over the place. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so over the years, I replaced different musicians. Till finally, one time I said, you know, I'm just going to do it on my own for a while, which I've always done a solo gig since the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, in between my bands and stuff to make extra money. So now that's pretty much my main thing. Unless right, some, right. you know somebody else wants to collaborate. It's kind of hard to find people that really want to commit to that mm -hmm. and an original music project. And I don't yeah, really yeah. want to be in an all cover project or a tribute project. Right. You know, it's time consuming and I enjoy mostly the creative aspect right. of it. Yeah, nothing beats like playing a like you mentioned before. You play some covers, but you know you you play your own music. Not, I, I'm sure nothing feels better than the crowd really vibing to your own music. Yeah, and when they request so the my other. songs, yeah, they request yeah. my songs too. You know, right? Yeah. And some people say, "I like your songs better than the covers you're playing." Oh yeah, that's a great feeling. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So Ray Gilman's latest CD is called Wisdom and. The 19th or 20th, we'll give you the 20th, you know, because, you know, that sounds that sounds better. I'm sure I'm sure it could be the 20th. Yeah. Now, uh, the best place for people to order the CD or download uh, MP3s, where should they head? Um, you could go to RayGilman.com and there's a link. Uh, there's a Ray Gilman here now is a site that has all the links mm -hmm. on it. They can order a physical cd for me but it's on spotify uh youtube apple music amazon music uh deezer it's it's on all the digital platforms right so and, and on uh paypal but yeah you can order one right from me using paypal from raygilman.com right so no excuses just click on the link your preferred uh vendor for for music and yep. wisdom ray gilman um you're getting a lot of great press on this new record right out of the box i mean it's only been out for um just about two months recently the uk did a, a write-up on you so talk yeah, they, about the press the positive press you've been getting yeah they've been uh pretty kind to me over there mm -hmm. and uh you know i'm pretty grateful for that they've uh power play magazine and you know in different countries over there have played my music quite a bit France and Spain and and mm -hmm. I've always got good response over there they I think that they like rock and roll a lot over there yet right. probably because I'm influenced by a lot of artists there I guess they hear that in my music so did you have a favorite Beatle growing up uh it's got to be 
George or John, you know, I like, okay. <laughs> I like yeah. George as an underrated guitar player, really. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You would know him playing the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do a while. My guitar gently weaves at, at my shows. Wow. Do it. That yeah. always goes over good, you know? Right. Right. Nice, nice uh, slow jam, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, in high school, you talked about the Beatles growing up. When I was in high school, our school would do something called, uh, the mini mini break or something during the spring, a whole week off from taking regular classes. And you'd, you know, one year I did sports reporting and we went out to the hockey rink and uh, some of the Ron Duguay, Phil Esposito, Pat Hickey were there and, you know, did a report. But another year I took a Beatles mini course the whole week on <laughs> nice. the Beatles. That was great. You know, watching all the movies and discussing the music and yeah. Yeah. When I was in junior high school, we had a music teacher, Mr. Holtz, we had okay. one whole unit on the Beatles. Oh, was, really? Okay. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. You know. That was gravy there, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no way to fail that class. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you recommend to people out there, young musicians, you know, getting involved? As a young musician today, what would you kind of uh, give your mentorship to, to young people on getting involved in music? Uh, well, you know, Get your instrument. There's a lot of resources on YouTube now on how to play, mm -hmm. which, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have that. We had a record player and then you had to take the, the needle and move it. There's a, yeah. really is a lot of excellent resources for players. You know, that's why you're seeing a lot of young kids like ripping off Stevie Ray Vaughan licks, right. you know, and that. So it's kind of exciting. You know, that's real music isn't dead. You know, there's, there's quite a bit of it out there that just, you just have to find it, you know. You see these some of these young kids that are just blow, mind blowing how good they are. Right. Yeah. But, oh yes, yeah, I saw some it, kid from Australia. Some, I think he had like dreadlocks, or he could play like a blues style. Yeah, you know, I I'd say stay away from drugs for one thing. If you're, you know, and don't get messed up when you go on stage. Right. And, and, Answer your phone and return messages. That's like a key thing. <laughs> you know, some yeah, of the right. younger players won't. Booking right. agents, I don't know how many times they'll call me. Oh, good. Right. At least you answer the phone. Yeah, you they're know, surprised, so. right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it is, you know. But I've got, I don't know how many gigs because someone else didn't answer the phone. So, But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, don't get messed up where you go on stage. It, you know, it, yeah. it doesn't make you play any better. No, no, you know, no, no. If you want to go to an after party and have a couple beers, that's fine. But, you know, even in my younger years, I always stepped on stage sober, you know, and right. then there's no excuses for anything, you know. Yeah. I think that's the best way. Just work hard and then you can relax and, and don't go. Yes, anymore. exactly. Yeah. yeah. When I used to drink, I mean, I haven't drank since 1991, but I did a radio show back in the day with a few too many in me. Nah, it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i've played uh i've had okay. many of bandmate you know and <laughs> we were younger yeah. that, that that took that road and, you know yeah, a lot yeah. of the guys that kept partying are they're dead now you know yeah yeah they, yeah it's a tough industry just being around that and steering clear of that and not falling to right. the vices. yeah even if you try the vices and not progressing to another level it's it's real tough I'm sure. yeah, yeah that's the thing i mean i i would recommend avoiding it right if you're serious about your music right so raygillman.com you can go there and uh the music you can get it on all your major uh, distributors for music and also directly from ray uh through paypal i believe now before we we head it off we got to discuss something we love we love our sports and i know you're a huge <laughs> minnesota fan yeah and I, I got a few wild players on my fantasy hockey team um which are I'm in second place heading up the first. So thanks to those guys on the wild. Kipper's off and Joel Erickson. Oh, yeah. Eric. Kaprizov. That, yeah. Erickson Kaprizov. Had, yeah. 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 Kaprizov's but, uh, an exciting young player from Russia. You know, and nice. he's our star player. He was hurt in the beginning of the year, right? Yeah, he was. In the end okay. of last year. Right. He was hurt. But yeah, he's he's going full force now. So and the team Timberwolves. That's our team. That's yeah, surprising. yeah, I know. I'm a Knicks fan, but the Timberwolves, they're doing great. Tell you have season tickets, right? No, I used to. I can't oh, okay. afford that anymore. Once they oh, okay. get good, they raise the prices, and I can't afford it anymore. You know? <laughs> right, right. So, so where do they play? They play at Target Center in Minneapolis. 
Okay. You still but get I've out been there to... a few times. I went to a few games this year. Oh, okay. And, you know, I watch a lot of them. I like Carl Anthony Towns. I got a yeah, chance right. to meet him once. He's just a sweetheart of a guy. And, he, you know, he's a seven-foot guy that can shoot three-pointers. You know what I mean? He's an incredible right. talent. And, uh, you know, the, the, the team's, you know, so much better now than they have been in the past. You know, they're, they're up to the, towards the top, you know, this year right. in the Western Conference. And yeah, the, the Knicks there... have Thibodeau for a coach. Yeah, yeah, he's he's. I mean, I like him, but he's. I mean, he's from you guys. Um, yeah. Well, what I, was the feeling towards the end of his tenure with the Timberwolves? Well, he he. Uh, when I had season tickets, he would be patrolling the sidelines. We had a really young team, right? And uh, he was yelling. I could hear him from my seat yelling at him all the time, <laughs> thinking, "I don't know how these young guys are going to react to being yelled at all the right. time." But I watched the game. Uh, with the Knicks recently, and he, he uh, look, he wasn't yelling. So I wonder if they told him to tame it down now, or if he still well, does he, that. He still just paces the sidelines. Yeah, but, but uh, I, mean, I, think I don't know how much in the NBA that helps with the players are on autopilot sometimes. But twenty four seven basketball for that guy, I think you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and was he, a good coach, right? But I think the Jimmy Butler era, era didn't go too well here, yeah. and I think that was his demise. You know. Yeah. The, what do they say? Coaches are hired to be fired, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have a good coach now. That Finch, I, you know, he seems to be can handle the young players real good. So, right. hopefully, they can make a dent in the playoffs this year. Yeah, I mean, you, you're going to be there. The Knicks going to be there as well. They always in the New York papers, they always uh, rumored that Carl Anthony Towns going to be a Nick. Every, yeah, every, every get year. Rid of him. Yeah, I know. I mean, you got to. My keep wife him. was gifted. A Carl uh -huh. Anthony Towns Rookie of the Year jersey framed from the, the, her company she works at. Oh, so I got wow. that hanging on my living room. Uh, wow. A signed Carl Anthony right. Towns Rookie of the Year jersey. <laughs> wow. He only played like one year of college, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I couldn't I tell he, you. But... He's Kentucky, I think. Yeah, Kentucky, yeah. yep. Right, right. So, yeah, they, they had a lot of players back then. Short stints. Vikings. Vikings. Yeah, Vikings yeah, that's, that area. seems like a frustrating uh, – <laughs> I mean, I got friends like yourself and, you know, the uh, Jason Peterson, Delaire, always, it's almost like you expect something bad to happen, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, Cousins uh, is a free agent. He might leave, but it might be time to start over with the younger guy, you know, that we can right. keep for a while. We got well, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. He got hurt this year, didn't he? Yeah. He still yeah. got over 1,000 yards. <laughs> he missed half yeah. the games, you know. <laughs> So uh, the guy, uh, who's the guy? Josh came in, right? The quarterback. Uh, jo Josh Dobbs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I, he was. I remember he was with the Tennessee Titans. Do you remember they showed his parents in the crowd? Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, they call him the pastor not because he's a he, he interned at NASA. Oh, right, <laughs> like right, that. right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he. You know, he did a nice job for a couple of games, but considering he didn't get to spend training camp with the team and that you can't yeah. you can't really harp on him too bad. But you know, he's a, he seems like a really nice kid too. You know, yeah. And, uh, I wish him luck. I hope they keep him, you know, for at least for a backup, you know. Yeah, the Giants had a guy like that, still have him DeVito, which was like won a few games and the toast of the town, but Tyrod Taylor came back. Step back in and yeah, not the yeah, long Yeah, I remember thing. that. You know, he's the guy yeah. that had the funny agent or something. I heard about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Straight out of the Sopranos. Uh, yeah, episodes. exactly. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah, I think they somebody told him. I don't know if it was in the organization, but they said you got to tone it down a little bit. I mean, he was doing like uh, promo spots on Monday down in an Italian restaurant in New Jersey, and he won like only two games. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah that's I, funny. I, I hope Daniel Jones comes back and he tore up his knees because the offensive line was pathetic all year. So, Yeah, your quarterback's only as good as your offensive line. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it goes with the Giants. So, The Vikings have had issues there too, you know, with the offensive line. Right. So, so well, hopefully uh, they'll free up a little cap space now. And... Yeah. yeah, yeah, you always have hope, right? You, you never yeah, jump exactly. ship like a lot of people do. <laughs> well, always... the... Oh, go ahead. We we say with the, if the Vikings win the Super Bowl, that's a sign of the apocalypse. So. <laughs> <laughs> My dad actually went down to when they played the Chiefs down in New Orleans. He went to the Super oh, Bowl. Awesome. Yeah. So, 
Uh, he's a Giants fan. He got me into the Giants, but uh, yeah, sure. I, he used to work for J.C. Penney's, and I guess they had the hookups for the major events. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I saw it on no. TV. Yeah, I yeah. For losses on TV, but <laughs> that's <laughs> right, Bud Grant. Yeah, at the, yeah, he uh, just died the, uh, at the Met, state. right? Yeah, he was. But uh, yeah, Bud was great. You know, it was recent years it was five below, and when they were playing outside. By the new stadium was being built, it goes out in short sleeves for the coin wow. toss. So. <laughs> oh, they had some like legendary coaches back then, Landry and Hank Stram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were good times had, growing up like that. Yeah, we had Alan Page, who was a right. defensive tackle, it was MVP of the NFL, mm -hmm. and he became a judge. You know, oh, he was a very okay. smart. I man. remember yeah, seeing he, him in a row. He was yeah. a judge. He just retired not long ago, I think. So, Carl Eller, I remember him. Yep. Yeah, foreman, all the purple people eaters. Yeah, that's right. Thing, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Scrambling Fran, right? <laughs> he played with the yeah, Giants a little bit. Heard an interview with him, and they said, uh, "What? Do, have you talked to Kirk Cousins?" And Tigerton says, "Yes." He goes, "I told him to use his legs more." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, Cousins was it a knee as well? Uh, Achilles. Oh, that's right, the Achilles. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I guess he's cool. doing okay, but now he's a free agent and wants a ton of money, so we'll see what happens. But I would think he's going to leave now. Oh, I don't okay. think they want to pay that kind of dough out. Yeah, yeah, especially if we well, haven't gone to the next level. Well, and they have to uh, pay Justin Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. If, if they want to sell tickets, they won't let him walk, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. And and every touchdown they play Prince's Let's Go Crazy still, right? Yep. Wow. And the Timberwolves at the tip-off play when doves cry. Oh, they when do? They oh, okay. At the, at the beginning of the game, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, So I mean, there's so, such a tradition of music out there. And um, I remember they had the Minnesota Music Awards. They probably still do, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And the Black Music Awards out there. I remember seeing videos on, online and everything like that. So, Yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff going on musically. I've and I've always said because the weather's so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Nothing to do but practice in the winter, you know. <laughs> yeah, we that's actually our saying. show got a nice write up years ago, and uh, the guy who writes not John Breen but Chris, the music critic. From, yeah, uh, I from don't the know Star if, Tribune. Yeah, it was yeah, for the Star Tribune. They gave us a write up, and also a Minnesota magazine. We were featured in there. Nice, um, but Chris, he's got a I forget his long name. Is, it begins with an R. Rindle Slider. That's the guy. Yeah, something yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, oh, he was real I've nice. He gave us a, a mention that we feature Minneapolis music. And we did, nice. you know, we used to do it in March. So, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I got to make it out there. That you yeah. Do that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That. We're, we're not going to change that. We don't live in Minneapolis, but, you know, we feel connected deeply. So, yeah. Awesome. Hey, Ray Gilman, man. It's been a great time catching up with you. Seeing you, I know we've done radio interviews and stuff like that, but you know nothing beats the face to face. And um, <laughs> congratulations yeah. on the new record and wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, and and you're probably when 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 you get the itchy finger to get working on the next one. Well, as you can see, there's uh, tracks on the machine in the back of me, so it's oh. already started. <laughs> oh, okay, right. So album number twenty one. Or 20, yeah. just around the corner. Yeah. I just, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I come, if I get an idea, I come downstairs. Sometimes I actually dream songs, you know, I try oh, to come down yeah. and remember it. Right. You know, hey, you've so, got that added convenience, you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's always going through my head 24 right, right. 7. Yeah. A blessing and a curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I so learned I to think, just go with it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So th thanks, Ray. I appreciate it. And uh, you can go to raygilman.com if you're in the Minnesota area where Ray's playing. Please go to support his gigs, live music. He'll be playing all spring and summer. And, and thanks a lot, Ray. Thank you. I appreciate it, Joe. You got it.